I always like when it's a good day, like, well, might as well share it with everybody who's watching. We should say, now, before we get into the, the wonderful course that you're doing, it's wonderful when, when there's art, public art. And, and one of the pieces that you particularly like, and it's, it's used on your, your wonderful poster, is the fact that, that, that these great Dwyer family have put the bear, oh, which is just a gesture of, of yes. you know... and I think it's just... It's a lovely thing for people to pass by and see this beautiful piece of art and also to remember why it's there. Like yeah. this lovely girl. This guy this bear is a man on a mission. Yes. And I think he's inspiring. And I think <laughs> and I didn't know Caroline, but I believe right. she's a very inspiring person. Right. So I think the the bear the bear encompasses the spirit of Caroline and I yeah. just think that's lovely and we just have to thank Helen sure. and Helen yeah, yeah. Dermot for giving us this beautiful piece of art and think of her daughter when we pass by. Well the great thing is that it seems art has always been in your life. I know when you were growing up that Whenever you went to, you know, abroad on holidays, your, your parents would, you know, take you to all the art galleries and there was books all over the house. And we, yeah. I, I don't know if there was a, a point that you realised, because a lot of people, thankfully kids, they, they'll give their kids a lot of access to art and music and all that. But was there a point you realised this is, this is something well, uh, that I want to have for, for the rest of my life? I liked looking at art. I didn't right. quite think that I'd ever get to try and understand it. Okay. It was only after I was, um, I saw an, an ad in UCD. I used to go onto the UCD website all the time. Right. I saw that they had an art appreciation course. Nice. way back in 2008 and I did that on Friday afternoons through the winter and fell totally in love and uh, the girl who was running it, a girl called Corinne O'Neill, a lovely woman, she said Rosemary why don't you do the Persa Griffith Diploma in European Paintings Wow. and I thought no I need a degree to have done that but she <laughs> says no you need nothing to do it right. so I went and I did it and um, decided this is for me I did an access course, gave up work got into college, did a degree in art history and Irish studies, well seven years you went yeah. I was seven years Diploma to the, Masters from the seven and a half years from the art appreciation to the, wow. to the, the end of the Masters, now this is this so, sort of came at a point where I know your your, your kids had sort of you know grown and flown, so you had sort of time, time thankfully, to, yeah, to indulge in. The only in thing I needed was a wife. Right. <laughs> I've had a wife. I tell you something. I'd have, I'd have had um, I'd have had firsts everywhere. Boom! There you go. There you go. Now that idea too, then of of taking it to. You know, you, you volunteered at, at, at the National Gallery of Ireland. Yeah. That uh, gave you access, beautiful sort of almost, oh, yeah. you know, behind yeah. the scenes access yeah. to, to yeah. what was on offer. Yeah. But taking your step into, I'm going to, you know, teach a course here. Was that was that a kind of a, a well, big, I was, big decision? I or? was invited to, to um, teach for a two year contract in UCD to, to teach right. um, studies in Irish painting. OK, right. And when I was preparing for the classes, I realized that there was a big gap in Irish art. And even when I went into the gallery, I noticed that we have art from the Renaissance, from the Baroque, from Italy, Spain, France, going back to the 13th, 14th centuries. But we have nothing belonging to Irish art that doesn't start earlier than the late 17th century. Right. Okay, we have our lovely Irish Museum, which has all the artifacts going back. And of course, sure. we have the monasteries and we have the high crosses and all of that. But we don't have any easel painting. And I thought this is very interesting. So then I started to, to look at the gallery more and I started to look up themes and I thought how do I tell these students to appreciate Irish art not just for what we have but for what we haven't got right so that we see a picture emerging that was obviously dictated by politics history colonization and that from there I picked my themes and was that difficult to sort of when you witness when you look back on history and obviously the old thing history is written by the winners when you realize there were people who suffered because of the politics and because of the circumstances that their their work didn't make it through or there wasn't the kind of well, conditions they, for them to create you know that that there are, are there's lots of you know kind of uh, opportunities now for artists to express themselves but was it a case that they the government weren't interested the well I think a country at war the last thing right. that goes is uh, its culture and its art right, okay right. It's, it's the economics and it's the military the first thing that sort of goes out the window say, right, yeah just for the military right, you know right, i think right. i think that's in, in every country okay art the sponsorship of artists and remember it was a time when artists were patronized they right. needed to have to have art for their houses or whatever or for their institutions well, sure. obviously that came later yeah but there wasn't the development of art history uh, per se in Ireland due to the fact that we were being colonised for over centuries and centuries and right. it wasn't until we reached a stability during the restoration that some of the exiled very wealthy aristocracy who had taken their art with them came back and started to, to um, uh, employ artists in their own homes. Then of course we had 10 years later we had the Battle of the Boeing, colonisation is complete, right. we have a century of peace and we have uh, now a new populace who've come to Ireland, they're building houses, they want to decorate their walls, and Ireland suddenly becomes a very prosperous um, country, temporary. It right, all right. ends with the English-French War at the end of the 18th century, 
and everything starts to fall apart. Top right. of the monasteries, everything like that. But by now, Ireland has a foothold within the art world and the fact that it has its own artists who are not only painting at home, but they're also going abroad. And they're going and they're picking up on all the isms of the French revolution in art. You know, you have realism, you've got impressionism, you've got post-impressionism, right. you've got modernism, and our artists then. And believe it or not, the avant-garde of modernism in Ireland were women. Okay. And they're the ones that are at the forefront of bringing modernism back to Ireland. And it's from the 1940s onwards you see the result of their interest in modern, modern, modernism. Well, well, the great thing about art and music and literature and, and, and certainly in painting and all that is that there's a... And often there's a sort of, not a secret language, but there's a reference to the times. There's a sense of, of what, what the world was going through at that, at, at that point. And even if there, we'll say, for want of a better term, a, a pretty picture, there still can be hidden detail. And, oh, and, yes. That's, and that's, what's, yeah. Yeah, that's what's lovely about looking at a painting. You can't, if, you, if, you, if you're reading a painting, you're bringing your own prior knowledge to it. You right. can't do that. You've yeah. got to let the art, the, the painting, speak to you. You can't right. go beyond the time of the artist. The right. artist doesn't know what's ahead of him. Sure. The artist only brings what he knows it's the moment, to that particular uh, time. Yeah. So, so we, it's very, you have to be careful when you're looking at art that yes. you, you ground yourself in his time. And I think there's always been mischief. You know, you, you th people think about you know Banksy and so forth that uh, they, they reflect and 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 so not not necessarily use the word mock, but they certainly reflect what's going on around them. And I'm always fascinated and delighted when you realise as it would as it should be, an artist has an individual voice and they will put of in little have. details that, that it may be you know a, 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 a kind of a pot shot at the ruling monarch or whatever way they feel it's about it. the world. The politics are reflected in their. They are, work. but also yeah. artists react. If you think back yeah. to the to the the, the beautiful monumental buildings of Greece and then you know they're, they're, they're less grand you know you, you have the Roman which is very tight and which is all um, warts and all and then you have the um, the huge Gothic cathedrals and then you sort of the Renaissance is very refined and elegant you have the Baroque you know and mm. you know this big huge big drama yeah. And then you've got the reaction to, to spiritual art, to more secular art. Reaction is all, art is action, reaction, all right. the way. So yeah. Banksy is a reaction probably to the price that people put on these really, really, really exclusive and, and um, sure. uh, expensive artworks that you find are going for, you know, millions and millions and yeah. millions and millions. So I think he, he's, or he or she is reacting right. to, to that. It is, I, I mean, I, and this is just an aside, I always find it slightly grotesque, the idea that you know, a painting born out of real passion and real struggle and, and, and not necessarily struggle in, in, in like for survival, but the artist often in the time is just trying to achieve a certain amount of, you know, joy through their work and expressionism. But I, I would think for many of them, they, they, I would imagine they would find it quite shocking and maybe almost bad taste that, that, that these paintings go for 40 million and 100 well, million. especially and, when they're dead. Right, you know, right. I think I think all artists would like likes to be discovered and all. Sure, you want that like Picasso life well. where you're you're aware it's, of your own yeah, success while you're so, alive and. So many didn't. Yeah, yeah. But um, I, I also think you've got to look at art as well for where it was intended. You go to galleries like the Louvre. You see yeah. all this art that should have been probably in um, private homes, obviously on altars, mm. in churches. So right. it loses its intent when it goes into a gallery. Right. So we have to be very careful. The setting art is uh, in a gallery. Yeah. The setting. Well, it's all about the context. Sure. Who commissioned the painting? You know, the, right. where is the artist coming from when he paints this? Yeah. Like, where was it intended? Because once you put an art work in a gallery, it loses its its original meaning. Yeah. We're there to gawk and admire our. You know, yeah, I mean, it changes. It changes the context or, you know, of, of yeah, but it totally changes the, t the context of art. Now, when it comes to doing the, the classes, I don't know if you yourself. I think you've done five in in uh, I in did. the. I brought in five the... groups into the gallery right. last year, and then I was asked, would I not do some at home? And as it is, it coincided with a little a bit of a, of a <laughs> uh, uh, challenge with life. So right. uh, at the moment, I'm a little bit incapacitated, right. but I will be back running. <laughs> there again. you go. No, I don't. <laughs> what's the, what's top speed you can get in that now in a good day? Um, I tried hundred. Oh, now, good woman! Yeah. Now you got yeah, some great hills around here great hills around here <laughs> so anyway um, Ross McParland I, can, I can't say enough about him well he's he, like one of those great patrons of old who he, recognises like art and he's art. he's fantastic unbelievable and yeah. like okay this is a theatrical setting for uh, uh, an art history um, course mm. but let's face it all art theatre. It sure. goes through the same process that we have a concept, we have to have a cast of characters, we have a composition, we have rehearsals, we have the opening yeah. night, we have right. the 
the unveiling of the painting. Yeah. So, you know, why not have an artistic course in a, in a, in a theatre? Well, the good thing about art, I think, and, and it's true of all art, if it's if it's good, especially, you can get in at any level. You don't. You can get in the ground floor, you can get in the second floor. You don't have to necessarily Very know personal. the world. Yeah, you will just sort of get a reaction to a piece of work. And then, you know, if, if it moves you, the great joy of finding out where it came from and how did it get exactly. here in regard to exactly. the emotional and, and yeah. artistic. But, but, but with a with view to this particular course, it's thematic. So I, right. mean, I look at, at six paintings that I believe are political and show how Ireland has moved on from, from, from her original status as a, as a sort of a, um, an early Christianized society to um, the early 1900s when we're waiting, well, that stage we don't know what's happening, right. but we're, right. we're waiting for our independence, okay? And then I look at the women artists and the challenges they've made. I look at um, the life of the Anglo-Irish um, ascendancy, their, yeah. their lifestyles, and look at paintings that would be to do with that. I look at land issues, where we have the la Ireland, uh, Irish people are so tied to their land, but how land often can let you down, you know, right. through the famine, right. how we have to leave our land, and sure. all the paintings that touch on and engage with all those topics. Right. Given that we're now heathens, uh, how's the art doing now? We're, we're all I don't know. godless I, heathens. I, I, and I, 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 I don't look at art of my own time. I'm very sorry. I have art that gives, gives us a message from beyond. Well, sometimes when the, it's really when the oil the, the oil sets and, and everything, the acrylic yeah. set, that you can really yeah. appreciate yeah. it as opposed in the moment. Yeah. It's all movement and, and it's all and it's kind all of... comparison. Yes, you know, yes, you look yes. at one person's art, you think that's beautiful. Then you see something else, you go, oh my God, they've gone yeah. deeper and deeper. Right. It's all about you know, comparison, yeah. it's all fluid, it's all going from one thing to the other. In the end, it's about you and what you like and nobody else's. Right. Because your opinion is never wrong in art. If you oh. don't like it, you don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> so we should wrap up by saying, I don't know whether you, you personally have particular works that, that knock you out or whether you're always surprised every now and again, something just like that, you admiring one painting and the next minute you see another that just sort of yeah, well, I think that's yeah. very important. That just shows that art is moving all the time as you are maturing as well. I mean, there's art that's, that'll make you smile. There's art that'll make you laugh. There's art that makes you want to inquire more about it. Um, my two favorite, if I had the money, hey, hey. and somebody said to me, would you like to take two paintings off a wall in two galleries? I would buy the, the Milkmaid. Oh, right. Jan Vermeer's The Milkmaid. I just right. love the painting. And the other one is The um, Laughing Horseman. Okay, right, right, right. Jack, Jack Yates. I love Jack yes. Yates. There's no yes. other artist for me than Jack Yates because of his of his transition and because of he touched on every aspect of Irish society, and he's probably the most nationalist of the of of, of our artists from that time. He's right. the one that engaged with the ordinary people, and but he gave us hope. It's good to know what to get you for Christmas now. Yeah, I have, I have thank a you. <laughs>